Almost Heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River, and this place, Summit Point Raceway, the host venue for today's very special event. Presented by the Absolute Beginner Leagues, the star of its Formula Neagle and Tony Hayes Cup gather for the season 14 race of champions. As always, series officials have chosen and to put the drivers in something a little bit different. This time, it's the Volkswagen Rally Cross Beetle. On tap are heat races, a quarterfinal, a semifinal, and a main event. And you can see it all live as it happens here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Hello and welcome to another GSRC broadcast. Yours truly, Bill Soup's on, joined by my longtime Absolute Beginner League partner, Adam Young, to call the action. Amjad Yaman is the director, armed with cameras locked and loaded by Dougie Beard. Adam, before we talk about the details of today's race of champions, and there are many, maybe we should talk about something a little more simple. How about we talk about the track today? It's a good choice. It is. I mean, Summit Point's one of those places really going to lend itself well to this uh, VW Beetle, the uh, the rally cross car, because, well, <laughs> let me just put it like this. Spoil alert, these guys are actually going to be encouraged to go off the track. I mean, pretty much to the limit of if you can get an advantage without getting a course cut penalty, it's going to be fair game. Of course, they're racing at Summit Point, which uh, one of the free tracks in the iRacing service, you really don't see a lot of uh, leagues that run on GSRC actually run at Summit Point. So that in itself is going to be a little bit more on the special side. We are going to be running the full layout, which is different than the normal race of champions that we've been doing races here in the last couple of years, uh, because they usually use the short track out, short track layouts in different places. I think the last time was the Nurburgring with the trucks. That was incredible. Well, here we're going to be running the 10 turn, full 10 turn layout at some point for 1.98 miles, 3.187 kilometers. And well, of course, some point opened in 1969. Uh, they host numerous SECA events here, and uh, even at one point even did a 12-hour endurance race out there in West Virginia. So overall, some point, great place to race. Many an iRacer's first introduction to road racing, well, let's take a lap in the car that a lot of road racers get their first introduction to iRacing on here on GSRC. All right, we're in the GSRC MX-5, so let's do a lap around Summit Point. Coming down the front stretch, Turn 1 will definitely be the best place to pass on the whole track. It's got the longest straight, so the draft will come into play, and then you hit one of the slowest corners. You really won't find any more ideal conditions anywhere else on the circuit. But if you're under attack and defend on the inside, watch out for the over-under on the exit of the corner. The good news is, turn 3 is the opposite direction, so even if your opponent gets underneath you, since this turn switches them to the outside, they'll probably need to completely clear you to get the pass done. Watch out for the crest on the exit though, since it'll be easy for the car to push out into the gravel. Then there's the scary turn 4, which will need a little lift to keep you on the proper racing line. This leads directly into the braking for 5, which is sometimes jokingly called yard sale corner for how often accidents happen here. But now we start into the technical back half of the course with the carousel. It's going to be pretty much single file through here, but your run off of it can make a big difference in your lap time. If you get it just right, the S's of 8 and 9 are flat out, and you won't need the lift until the final corner. But despite the high speeds you'll reach coming up to 10, this is a surprisingly fast sweeper with very little braking. That makes overtakes pretty uncommon on entry. Because it leads back onto the front stretch, it's much more important to ensure you set yourself up for a good run off the exit. This should keep you safer from attack into the first corner. But if you kept it together, you've now hopefully finished a lap around Summit Point. No matter what car we do it in, those track guides are always good. There's a lap around Summit Point and Joe Peake doing the talking and the taking us around some of the point. All right, we have no points to show you, but we are going to take an in-depth look now. We're going to turn over to Adam to drill down a little bit on how this event actually is going to be laid out. Okay, so first of all, I want to point out that this event for these guys, it's all about fun. They're all coming out here to have a good time. You are going to see some hijinks today. But yes, at the end of the day, 
there will be a winner. Okay, so 16 drivers are invited from the Formula Eagle Cup and the Tony Hayes Cup. Of course, the Formula Eagle running the uh, has run the Formula Renault for the first time this past season in the Tony Hayes Cup, of course, running the Mazda MX-5. So they have a mix of drivers between those two series. The car here for today is going to be the Volkswagen Rallycross Beetle. They're running fixed setups. They're hopefully going to keep the car off the rev limiter out there. They're going to run some heat races. Of course, see if you're familiar with any kind of dirt races or anything else. Okay, just got told by Amjad, our director, catching me there. The, Formula, uh, the Tony Hayes Cup used the Porsche this season. They changed over to Okay, back to the heats. Heats are going to be two laps each. There are going to be three heats per driver and the top six advance. They're going to have a point standing breakdown. Everything else will keep you up to date on that as we go along. Quarterfinal is going to be three laps. If you are in P11 through P16, you're going to that quarterfinal and only the top two get out of that quarterfinal in advance to the semifinal. And in the semifinal, well, you got the P7 through P10. And again, the top two advance. And then the final, well, you want to be in the one of the P1 through P6 slots. It immediately advance to the final. Don't have to worry about doing the quarter or the semifinal. And then, of course, well, we'll see how things shake out. And, of course, we're going to be tracking how many times Johan Vandebelt flips the pace car. <laughs> you know, you talked about it's fun for the drivers. But honestly, Adam, we do we do a lot of GSRC broadcasts together. And, and all of them are fun. But honestly, we really do look forward to this one, don't we? We do. I mean, this is this really is probably. I love ABL. Uh, you know, you know as well as I do, uh, Soup. That you know, I, I kind of step back a little bit from the broadcast here for the season. I actually got to run a little bit with these guys here earlier this season, and, and, and I really enjoy the Absolute Beginners League. But it's these race to champion events that it, they're just so much fun. They're fun to call. They're fun to watch the guys have fun and just kind of let loose a little bit because these guys are going for championships all the time. And this one, it's all about having fun. Well, here's a double double-edged compliment for you. You are clearly a better commentator than you were a driver. Well, I, I was clean. You didn't catch me <laughs> yeah, anywhere. That's true. You were uh, safely running in the, let's put it politely, back half of the field there. All right. How about we talk? Let's put Adam, his, his day gig as a, as a uh, professional real-world weatherman. Let's bring up the, the numbers here and see how it looks today. Oh, we can't, oh, we can't bring it up. So we'll have Adam actually, because he is a professional, he can he can do it. He can describe uh, it with words. You know, and, and, and I actually had to go on the news this morning, so I was like, I am tired, but I am here anyway because, of course, this is fun. All right, so uh, we're running about 88 degrees. Track temperatures 110. Of course, partly cloudy skies, so uh, plenty of heat in, the, in these Volkswagen Beetles. They will be sliding around. You see uh, Vincent Bren there uh, going a little bit off track. Of course, these cars, you can do that. Winds are variable out of the north. It's going to go between about 2 and 7 miles an hour. So that'll probably play a little bit of a role. Uh, maybe give us a chance, too, Soup, to see the new smoke and dirt effects in the iRacing that they put in this last build earlier this week with the wind. So maybe we'll see some of that dirt and smoke move around a little bit. Boy, little by little, iRacing keeps edging in. As they're going to have day-night transitions coming and rain. I can't wait. Little by little, it's coming. Hey, let's pull back the curtain a little bit on the GSRC production. Because they're doing this so uniquely today in one big session, and honestly, it's run in a practice session, we're not able, our, our software is not able to put up uh, the graphics underneath about what position they're racing in. But we can... Uh, we are going to be able to link into the timing and scoring page, and we'll be able to tell you the up-to-date standings going on throughout the heat races. So this is going to be good. We are on top of it the best we can. Look good under that onboard camera there. You can see that that West Virginia sky pushing down here on the racetrack at some point. And look at them sawing on the wheel. That's Yal Valverde. Yeah, that's Yal Valverde on. having Ooh. a little bit of fun. <laughs> And, and I was out there running a few laps. You could really get onto this car. I mean, it's it's a blast. I think he's playing around with a handbrake right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the camera view. And look at the pink panther paint job on there. Da -dun, da -dun. Uh, you were out there doing a little practice going on. Where can you where can you cut the course? Where are we looking for some guys to go off track and actually make it effective? Uh, well, right there, that 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 uh, left hander that you saw him just a few minutes ago uh, do that. Um, kind of go off into the gravel there a little bit I'm, I'm still i'll be honest it's been so long since i've been a race at some point i don't remember my corner numbers uh but uh really 
you can really go off the course anywhere that you can gain time and not get a cut course penalty. And the problem with on, on that one is because I was doing it in the spectator mode, I couldn't really get the cut course penalty. So uh, I gotta, I, I'll admit, Soup, we've, we've got to wait to see where these guys go on that one. So you're talking mainly, and I, I think everyone who's raced some of point would know the it's that left-hander one, two, and then it's the th corner three. I think it's called wagon bend. Yeah, wagon bend, wagon yeah. bend. That's right. You can take it. I mean, it's hard not to take a real race car off there, so that'll be fun. Uh, you can go it's wide and go right out yeah. there to the tire wall. I watched plenty of guys nail that tire wall, though. I think that'll be a good way to see some cars end up on their lids. Do the car um, just even when you have it on the pavement? Does does the rear end come around on you on this car a lot? Do you get to work on it? If you're you're fighting well, you? with the with the four wheel drive of these cars. And I, at least I remember right, they were four wheel drive, and it feels a lot like four wheel drive. Uh, yeah, you. you Due to a point, I, I felt a little bit swirly under braking um, at, at times, but you can definitely throw them sideways. I mean, they're designed to throw sideways, especially if these guys have taken the time to get the handbrake set up, uh, that you can get this thing sideways on the asphalt, no problem. I did not realize that, that these cars actually did have a handbrake in them. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, you, you find a lot of guys coming up with different methods for using the handbrake because, you know, most sim racers rigs, we don't have handbrakes. Right. So uh, I've, I've heard of a lot of guys, uh, you, you know, uh, I think I, I want to say it was Blake Reynolds. You, you're, you watch the majors, you know who Blake Reynolds is, or you watch the, the pro series, uh, I, Oval Pro Series, you know who Blake Reynolds is. And uh, he was talking at one point about setting up his clutch to use as a handbrake oh. pedal. So I was like, oh, okay, that's an interesting idea. So I started doing that. Hey, you know, it works pretty well. Another spot where you might see cars going off is the exit of Paddock Bend. That's corner 10. That's the, the right-hander that sets up down the long. Boy, and talk about a long straightaway. This, for 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 a racetrack, this, this front straight really goes for a long way. Right, you know, that helps people like David Burns take the ramp and uh, figure out how many body panels will come off the car. Practice going on right now. Of course, there is no qualifying. We can talk about some of the drivers that are here. Some big names. Errol Numb is here with us, the Formula Neagle champion. Which, if he, he announced at the end of the, uh, the ABL, when we uh, figured out that he was going to be the champion for the season and stuff uh, a few weeks ago, that he probably wasn't going to come back and defend his title in the Formula Renault car, uh, maybe looking at uh, a new challenge, because he's won several championships now. Uh, so it'll be interesting to ask him if he's uh, changed his mind here in the last week or so, and uh, see if he'll be back next season. Yeah, they, they, that would be surprised to see him back. You know, Adam, in a series you don't cover that I happen to get a sub in every once in a while one that the weekend warrior uh series he showed up for that one they have four drop races he missed the first four races so he came in basically race five with no points ended up winning that championship as well <laughs> in the srf yeah he is uh, a, and he's, he's a wheel man he is a yeah, wheel man he is indeed uh let's see who is that down there that's Creating smoke screens. Got Vincent Brim down here right now, creating smoke screens, and uh, Jal Valverde at the end of pit road. That, that's a good. That's a good. Look at that. Look at that new smoke effect there, Soup. Look how that smoke moves off the track. I, I like love it. it. Yes. That's very cool. That's another thing that you can do in these cars. You can pretty much lock up the fronts and uh, uh, you know really get those things to spin it around. Now, waiting to see if they're lining up here, they're forming up for the first heat, or if they're going to do a practice run real quick. I think, it's, looking at the time, I think we might be lining up here. That's a long way. I didn't have a good... Is, is that Dave Grohl on the... Uh, that would be Dave Grohl okay. on the <laughs> front of Liam Quinn. Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters and Nirvana fame getting a front row seat. <laughs> so many people. So I guess that is on the on the pace car there. We're going to have live pace cars, so they're going to drivers who are not in the heat will go out there and lead their way around. Let's go ahead as they do the pace lap. Let's go ahead and tell you who is in this one. Now, I'm just going to go by the chart that I'm given here. I believe we have in this one, it's going to be Errol Numb. will be out there. Oh, look at this. We have the Batman cam. There we go. Also out there, could we have Bastian Hausman? Might he be in this one as well? I'm doing this one right. There we go. There's Bastion. Edgar Sancinelli. Hey. Then in the 
the second row also is Neil Bamber. Bambi's going to be with us in that Coca-Cola machine. David, third degree burns. There he is. And then finally, in the... Go ahead. I was going to say, for what it's worth, David Burns is one of the guys from Kiss. Or no, no, that's a clown. Never mind. Almost the same <laughs> thing. And then finally, the man from Portugal, Yal Valverde, is out there as well in the... There he is. Really, I just wanted to get him a close-up of the uh, the naked clown there on the side of the, the, the car. So we're going to go two laps. They get five points for a win, four points for second, all the way down. Zero points for six, and they they'll have each driver will have three heat races. So they are their their scores will be summed, and of course, like Adam talked about, the top six will advance straight to the main event. All right, I'm going to save my traditional call for the main <laughs> There's event. There's Liam Quinn. <laughs> Liam Quinn. We're going to watch the pace cars from now on. <laughs> two, he, he put yeah, those two or three rolls. The Russian judge only gives it two points up. Over the hay bales. All right, guys. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Makes you water, holler, hidey ho. They are to the start finish line right now, and jumping out in front. That looks to be is that looks to be Valverde. No, I'm sorry. That's a uh, Errol Numb. Yeah, Aaron Nub had a great jump, but he's already under pressure from Bastion Hausman. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a bump there from Bastion going through turn one. Bamber and Sancinelli run second and third. You see the Roland Estonian part start to pull away. They work through Wagon Wheel. All right, see who goes off. There's somebody taking a wipe, and he puts it and bangs it in the wall. That was Bastion Hausman. Oh, actually, Sub, I think he was maybe about a half inch off of the wall. It wasn't very far, though. But it actually cost him a little bit of time there. Uh, is, uh, Neil Bamber is going to get around him, and he's actually going to have Jav Averti get in front of him. Oh, Bastion Hausman losing it. He's getting sideways. He's got to straighten it out. He's going to fall back to six. But who's that man there getting sideways? That's that. Sancinelli. Sancinelli drops to the back, but he's fighting back. Sancinelli, the battle for fifth is intense. There's single file up in front of him. I remember these heats, only two laps. So, uh, Euro Num here going through the final quarter. You see lots of guys run wide through the final quarter. Just push it out there, get on the gravel and the grass. These cars accelerate very well off track. Let's go back to fifth position with Bastian Hausman. This is the only battle that is really in contesting right now. Sancinelli trying to see if he can outbreak him. That's not going to happen. Errol Numb comfortably out in front, Bamber in second. You see Valverde, he's being challenged a little bit by Burns as they go through Wagon Bend. Off they go again. Adam, I can't think of a better track to have these rules to find. This was this one. Off tracks are so fun here. Look at the battle for third right now. It's right on board with Burns right behind Valverde. Yeah, they, they do a lot of tests and all that, trying to figure out what would be a good combination. Uh, you know, like they did they did the uh, short course at Urban Ring, that, 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 I think that one mile or so layout that they have there with the, the old trucks. And <laughs> that was insane with that very tight right-hander there at the end of the lap that a lot of guys had problems with. All right, they're going to come to the checker flag. Our winner is going to be Errol Numb. He picks up five points. Bamber gets four. Valverde and Burns get four, three and two. Oh, a close battle here for fifth place. I don't know who got it as they went over. I believe I believe it was Hausman maybe got fifth place on that one. We'll wait for the official scoring to come in. And there's your first heat race. And immediately the cars roll out for heat number two. And uh, that's one thing that guys were saying is that uh, they're going to be uh, pretty quick probably on, on getting the next heat rolling after the uh, the conclusion of the uh, one before it. So you'll see things move along here pretty quick today. And uh, Bastion Hausman has been giving credit for fifth there, Sue. Okay. Car number 57, Edgar Sancinelli looks like he's going to be our pace car driver. In the Frito Sports Machine, they start to line up behind him, and Edgar gets them rolling. So, Adam, I got to do the uh, the lineup for for the first heat. Why don't you take the lineup heat for uh, 
for heat number two. All right, starting on pole, and this one's going to be Pierce Cocky in that, uh, I guess you're going to call that a turquoise blue machine there, uh, except it uh, doesn't look like I carried over, so it's showing up as Alberto on the broadcast. But in another Alberto card, except this one more purple, you'll have Elmer Noblum starting beside him. Beef jerky making me hungry right now. Alex Johnson starting back there in row two. Alongside him is going to be uh, Vincent Brem with a uh, um, colorful interpretation there on the bar. I'm sure you can say that on the broadcast. Maybe in Young Blue to be starting back there as well. And then Dave Grohl making an appearance this time for real in the race, not just as the base car, and with Liam Quinn out there. Here's Kaki, uh, showboating already. Clearly Vincent Brem trying to promote Garden Tree. That's good. That's a good hobby. Okay. Well, let's see how heat number two goes. These guys are all making their first attempt, I believe. None of these drivers were in the previous heat, and I think that's how that's going to go the first three heats interesting adam that also that that uh the car of pierce cocky uh shows up for me the same way it's showing up for you not the way that it's showing up on our screen oh oh yeah, yeah. yeah so we, we, we've had there, a, we there there's that turquoise blue car so we'll see what edgar sanchinelli does he's on the hammer edgar sanchinelli the pole sitter oh yeah excuse me the the pace car he's up in the air oh he's gonna nice go and job and and he wrecks so well, he's out, out of the ballpark. As here's Gaki, he's going to bring him to the green flag here to start the first lap of this two-lap heat. Good jump on the rest of the field. Elber Noblum back there. He's going to be trying to fight for second. He's going to be fight for second in going into uh, in turn one with Alex Johnson. Oh, going to go three wide almost as Vincent Brim tries to make it three wide. Lots of contact. Vincent Brim is sideways. Everybody gets through it, going straight. Boy, they were really tight going into corner of the They all got it sorted out, Adam. They did, but you see uh, uh, Alex Johnson back there really trying to stick that thing sideways and try to gain some time, and I think he kept it out of the tire barrier. Oh, and the two cars spin off. Oh, now Alex Johnson's one of them. Who's that that went upside down? It's Vincent Brim. Okay, quick, uh, took a quick tow. Now they will throw the yellow, right, Adam? If if, uh, if they feel that the track is blocked or it's a big one. Yeah, right? yeah. If, it's, if the track is blocked or if it's a big, big accident, they'll they'll red flag the event and, and restart it with the drivers that were involved going to the back. Riding on board right now with Vin, uh, uh, Liam Quinn and trying to see who that. I think that is uh, Elmer Noblum in front of him. Wayne actually has a good run here. He got a little bit of the draft down into corner one. He's going to look to get that 24 on the inside. Not going to do it. Young Bluth, our leader. Nope, Bloom and Quinn. Back in the IKEA car, Alex Johnson, after he lost those spots racing in fourth. Looking to see if either one of the other cars involved in the incident came out. They did not. Look at this battle going on for a second. They touched. Hey, actually, I think that's for third right now. With, oh, uh, for third. Yeah, Pierce Cocky back uh, in front. Uh, Fabian Young lost in second. So this is for third here. I think Quinn's got a good run. Look, good look on the inside. If he can get the hammer down. Owen Oblum will have the inside. Oh, contact. Yep. All right, Cocky comes around. Corner number 10. Again, we can't keep track of the laps. I believe this is lap number two, and it is. Cocky gets the win. Young Bluth gets second. Note boom. And Quinn go third and fourth. Whee! And, and I, I like Pierce Cocky there. You see, it was very technical coming off the ramp. He was able to do a full rotation longitudinally in the air before coming back down. Go back to that first lap incident. Look at Alex Johnson. He goes wide, gets it back. He loses a few spots, but very next corner, again, makes contact there with Vincent Brim. And, well, car meet tire wall. Vincent Brim goes for a ride. See what it looks like from Johnson's point of view. There you 
go. And he was able to keep the car back out there. He looped it around and, and came, brought it out and got that fourth place finish. So the next heat already out there. Let's go ahead and give you the drivers. I'll do them all. On pole, season, I believe, five or six champion, Tuan Tran. Next to him is going to be Ludwig Sauer. As they come towards us, our pace car once again, pace car driver, Edgar Sanchinelli. We'll be seeing if Edgar can keep it in the track this time. There you go. Our second row is going to be populated by Tony Hayes. Good to see the namesake of the Tony Hayes Cup racing with us. Driver number four, man who organizes the series and does a little GSRC commentating as well. The fan belt, Johan Vandenbilt. Here in a beautiful Legos machine. Oh, that's a good looking car. Then the final row, Bastian Hausman. How's we going to? I was wrong. I thought the first three would be all separate drivers. So that's not the case, obviously, so we've gone through 12. So Bastian Hausman is going to be out there making his second appearance. Joining him way back in the sixth spot, Daryl Dunn. Oh, and Edgar goes out of the ballpark again. Okay. They're under throttle. Here we go. Numb in the sixth position. We'll keep an eye on him as he works his way through. Juan Tran leads the field down into the first corner. There is a battle for second. That's Sawyer trying to hold off Vanderbilt. Oh, my! That was Bastian Hausman with a dive bomb. Yeah, and Ludwig Sauer able to take big advantage of that. He's going to take over the lead with Bastian Hausman in second. Bastian Hausman, though, hits the grass, get back in, really steps out. Hero Dump has to take a base of action. Hausman in the wall. Oh, it's sliding back on track. That was Johan Vanderbilt that got cut it off. They actually, Hausman went in so deep, he flew right by Tony Hayes. There's more contact in the back now as Hausman continues to be a menace as he gets into Vanderbilt a second time. Meanwhile, oh, geez, all the way from sixth position. It took him a whole half a lap to get there. Errol Num is our leader. Is, there, is there anything that Euro Num can't drive? <laughs> I give up. <laughs> My goodness, if if a washing machine could race, he'd win with it. And not only did he, you know, take the lead, but I mean, he he's over top now of uh, of Ludwig Sauer by at least four or five car lengths. Able to, he's just able to get that power down. Head down into wagon. Let's see what type of line Arrow Numb takes. Boy, he's using it all. They all go wide. Get that momentum. Sour, Tran, Tony Hayes in fourth. Vanderbilt, after being hitting twice, is in fifth. And uh, Bastian Hausman back there in sixth. Too far away to hit anybody else. Settle down, still with Euro Num up there, but Lowick Sauer and uh, Tuan yeah. Tran both uh, both driving Sesame Street machines. Big Big Bird Yellow there on the uh, the front fenders. Yeah, I want to see if they were sponsored by different characters. Nope, they are identical. Looks like Sauer's going to come around and get second ahead of Tran. Of course, Euro Num got the win. That's two wins for him. You can pretty much ink him into the to the main event. Tuan Tran so far has the highest air time out of everybody that's taken that ramp. I would expect nothing less from a car number 21. Tony Hayes, Johan Vanderbilt, and then Bastian Hausman, I believe, went fourth, fifth, and sixth. And we're going to... Yep. <laughs> a lot of shenanigans going on there right now. All right, Adam, let's go ahead and, and uh, alternate calling lead on this one. I, I took, why don't you do the, the yeoman's work here for... Uh, uh, that's what we were doing anyway. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> All right, so we're going more Bastion Houseman here real quick. Turn one lap, one there, getting formed up for the next heat. And just see him go in there and, and, and boom, Vanderbilt just, just doors him. 
Of course, I think Vandebel kind of turned in a little bit there too. But hey, you know, it's it's the rally cross cars. That's going to happen. If you're watching this broadcast and you want to relate it to Star Trek movies, uh, I'm getting all the 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 odd number heats, and Adam's going to take all the even number heats. Oh, okay. So you're getting all the good ones. No, no, no. Star Trek, it's the even ones. Oh, it's the even. Number. I should know that. Like, I'm like the world's biggest. Two Rathacon, and then the one with the whale. That's like two and four. And so that's at least that's what I've been told. All right. Yeah. So who do we got here? All right. So Liam Quinn. Well, excuse me, Dave Grohl out there pacing the field right now. Uh, you know, behind him, uh, actually running is uh, uh, Neil Bamber. You'll find Edgar Sanchanel in this one. Uh, Yao Valverde, David Burns, Elmer Noplu, and Piers Cocky. So it should be a pretty good split. Expect a lot of a lot of hard racing out of this one. There's David, third degree Burns, with the parts of the car covering up the parts of the clown. Now they do they do get a fresh race car. They if they they bang it up in the heat, they don't have to race the same car they gave them trouble. So they get right, a right. Fresh it's just car. like a practice session. That's why the toes are very quick too, because they just pop the reset button. So, uh, but uh, Liam Quinn, uh, Liam Quinn's varying the speed on him a little bit here. He's going fast. He's going slow. He's really trying to keep him up a little bit. We'll see how they start this time. Last time, the last heat, uh, really kind of uh, uh, the start kind of spread out a little bit. And of course, we're also going to see if. Liam Quinn can keep it in the track because Edgar Sancinelli has not the last couple of times. Judges can't score you, Edgar, unless you keep it in the track. Liam Quinn not going to trash it right there. My trash it. So well, he's going to go use the ramp at the end of the track. As the start of the race happens behind him. And yes, he did leave the track. Neil Bamber going to get the good, solid jump on the rest of the field. He's taken the field into turn one with a solid lead. And David Burns in second, but Edgar Sancinelli trying to do something from the outside, but back in, steps out on him. He's going to go through the gravel and the dirt. He gets Burns a, is going to take second. Sancinelli gets an A for effort and a D minus for uh, execution. Execution, yeah. <laughs> Oh, David Burns definitely has himself a good car out there here for today. Didn't quite see what we wanted him to out of him in the first heat he was in, but doing a lot a little bit better this time. Challenging for the lead. If he just get to Neil Bamper's back bumper, might see a little bit of a uh, excuse me kind of thing. Now, Bamper's is sitting on four points already. Burns only has two, so David really wants to pick it up here. Valverde's got three. Yeah, of course, the ultimate goal is to not have to do the the two sem quarter and semifinals, get straight to the A main, and the top six will go straight to the A main. Or, well, the final. Sorry, I'm the, I'm so into dirt tracks right now. I got yeah. a sprint car race tonight. We're all with you. Pierce Cocky back there racing in what would that be? I guess fourth position. He Remember, he was the winner of his heat. Oh, Neil Bamber doesn't have a very good turn one. David Burns is going to get underneath him. He's going. Neil Bamber's still out there struggling. Is he going to lose second? Now, Verde's starting to try to challenge him here. He's got to run, but Neil Bamber's able to shut the door. Going through that little right-hand kick there. Wagon bend. Not quite able to get to him here just yet, Val Valverde is. And while that's happening, that's allowing Pierce Cocky to get uh, caught up to him. Pierce Cocky finished second in his heat a little while ago. So he can stand to possibly get enough points to already advance out of this if he can just get a few more spots. Boy, Yao Valverde's trying so hard to get around Bamber. There's just not enough time, too. With a two-lap sprint, you got to do it when the opportunity's there. He didn't get it. He lost momentum. I think he's going to have to settle for third. Well, with that, David Burns taking that car, the naked clown machine, down the front straightaway. He's going for the win. Battle right for right behind him, we got a big battle. Woo! Jalva Verde trying to do it through the grass. They make contact after the line. <laughs> Jalva Verde out of the ballpark. David Burns doing a great barrel roll, but here's Cocky getting the distance. That looked like a good thousand yarder right there. <laughs> The barrel roll was pretty, but the, the one for distance was impressive. We're going to look at the pass for the lead here. And, and you'll, you'll see... Um, sorry, <laughs> trying to get caught up here on my machine. Uh, 
to see uh, Bamber there just kind of just get to the outside. David Burns just able to sneak right to the inside. And, well, David Burns didn't look back after that. So there you go. Heat number four is in the books. We'll give you the the sum of how that played out there in just a minute as soon as they add in those points. It looks like they're getting it right now. It was indeed Burns, Bamber, Valverde, Cocky, Notebomb, and Sanchinelli. And our, our leader still is Errol Num with 10 points. Bamber with eight. Burns, Cocky both have seven. Valverde with six. Young Bluth, we have not heard from him. He's right now sitting in uh, with four points. He's in the transfer position tied with Sauer and Notebomb. Of course, there are more to come up. So let's go ahead and talk about the cars that are out there right now as we get ready for heat number five. Our pace car driver is going to be Edgar Sanchinelli. And then the drivers in this heat, Vincent Brame and Alex Janssen fill up rows one and two. Liam Quinn, Fabian Youngbluth in the second row, Ludwig Sauer, and Tuan Tran in row three. Sanchinelli clears the final corner. <laughs> ah, there you go, Edgar. Great job. And now we turn our attention to Vincent Brame. He gets a good jump. Brame was scoreless in his uh, first heat. He's going to try to make it up right now as he leads the field down into the first corner. Janssen and Quinn go side by side. They're three wide behind. Janssen able to hold off Quinn. Fourth position goes to Youngbluth with Sauer being attacked by Tuan Tran. These six cars are close together. It's amazing Flat. how well those cars still accelerate on that dirt. Boy, different racing lines into five. Ooh, A little contact. bit of attack. Dave Grohl hits Alex Johnson. Just to be clear, that's Liam Quinn. <laughs> Johnson continues to get that car sideways. Car number 16 racing in second position. Quinn is all over his trunk. No, that's David Grohl all over his trunk. I, I see him. He's right there. Well, he's got side by side now. He's got the position. Move number 24 up. Oh, but he's going to go wide. A little hokey doke, a little huck a buck, a little up and under. And Just fighting back. Just, Liam just couldn't get the power down out of that corner and, you know, had so much going in and just overdrove the entry, couldn't get the power down out. And he might lose some more spots here. Battle Ran. from third, fourth, and, or excuse me, fourth, fifth, and sixth, just big. as lots of contact right now between Tuan Tran and Fabian Youngloose. A great move from Ludwig Sowers. He gets, I think, one or two cars on that corner. Well, it helps when those one or two cars are locked fenders. Yeah. Sauer continues on the move now. And now look at this. Here comes for second position. He's back. Quinn tries to do it on the outside. Oh, it's P3. I'm sorry. And this is, again, Sauer attacking Quinn. These guys are behind Janssen and Brim. Just, just remember, Ludwig, when Dave Gold gets passed, he gets angry. Tran looking on. Uh-oh. Quinn was out in the grass. He lost a lot of momentum. Here comes Sauer. He has one more corner to do it. Ludwig doesn't force the issue. Coming across the line. Bram gets the win. Johnson gets second. Oh, it was close behind Sawyer. I believe it's going to get third. And then we'll wait for the official scoring for the rest of them. Well, I can rewind and probably tell you how it played out. I believe it's going to be Sawyer, Quinn, and Tran. Yes. And, and we missed it, but I think Vincent Bram may have set a new record for distance. Ah! 
So, that's heat number five. We're working our way through. Over halfway done on these heats. All right, so this Adam, time they're, around, they're out on the track. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say this time around. Sorry, I had to take a quick drink of water there. Uh, Dave, it looks like uh, David Burns is going to be the one leading him down. And so, actually lining up to legitimately race this heat. This is going to be heat seven. Um, actually, uh, I've got uh, David Burns actually driving in this heat. So, what's he doing out there, acting like he's the pace car? We are heat six. Oh, heat six. Okay, I'm one ahead. Ha ha ha. All right, Johan Vandevelt is going to be the one taking him down to the green flag on this one. And that Lego machine alongside him is going to be Tony Hayes. Euro Numb, we'll see if he's able to do something there. Of course, last time out, he started in six and won the heat. Alongside him is going to be Bastian Hausman. Edgar Sanchinelli starting back there and sharing the last row with Neil Bamber. And yes, it is. David Burns will be the pace car for this one. Vandevelt only has one point so far. Hayes has two. Of course, Errol Nunn sitting with a perfect 10. He's two for two with wins. Well, when you were going to say perfect, I thought you were going to talk about Edgar Sancinelli being perfect. Just not the type of perfect he wants to yeah. be. Oh, Bastian Hausman. He's not only having trouble during <laughs> the race, having trouble on the warm up. Come on, hurry up, Bastian. Let's go. Reminds me of the little kid who doesn't stay with the family at Disneyland. Come on. We're heading to the Matterhorn. Just waiting for David Burns to punch it. We'll see what he does. Last time, Edgar Sancinelli had two and a three rolls on the hard stop. Ooh, Ooh almost identical to Edgar Sancinelli. Edgar Sancinelli, touch cleaner. He'll get the extra tenth of a point from the Russian judge. And we're away this heat. This time around, as we mentioned, Johan Vandebelt being the one to take him down. Tony Hayes running in second. They charge off into turn one. And Johan Vandebelt actually getting himself a pretty good jump on the field. He needs it. Try to get it past uh, Euro Numb. Euro Numb back there rubbing a few fenders, though. Trying to muscle his way into second. He does work his way around both Tony Hayes and Bastian Hausman. He had to make contact with to get there, but he is there. And Johan Vandebelt will probably be feeling that pressure here before too long, given Euro Numb's track record here for today. Tony Hayes right now has his own hands full. Bastian Hausman and Neil Bamber back there. Yep, Hausman is Oh, up. Bastian Hausman nails Neil Bamber. They both get it bowing back straight. You know, with Bastian Hausman actually still doing a little bit of dirt tracking, but he's back on the road. They changed his name from Bastian to Bash Tian, because he is bashing into people this race. And Euro Numb going to be, uh, I think he's going to be making this pass here on Johan Vandebelt for momentarily. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets him in the one, except Johan Vandebelt goes wide. He might get him on the front way. They go almost all the way to that firm. If you take that, your day is probably going to be done, at least as far as this heat's concerned. Johan Vandebelt trying to Let take it. the defensive line. Euro Numb trying, going to try to stick it on the outside. Runs yes, a little wide. He's wide. Johan Vandebelt. Second. Fends off Errol Numb, teaches him a lesson. <laughs> Woo! That puts Tony Hayes back in second place. Six time champion. Take that, says <laughs> Bastion Housen. <laughs> oh, sorry, Vanderbilt. Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I knew what you meant. That's the important thing, right? If I know what you meant? Yes, no, it's important. I say it right, too. <laughs> Tony Hayes is getting a little loose in front of Euro Numb, though. Hey, he's fighting to keep a hold of that second position. As you mentioned, uh, Tony Hayes is going into this heat with only two points. So, you know he wants to try to get that second place. Oh! Too wide! That's a sudden stop to his race. Ouch! That's an airbagger. Yeah. Well, while up front, Johan Vandebelt coming to the line. And then the ramp. He flies out of the ballpark, winning heat number six. Looks like Errol Numb got second. Bamber had to settle for third.
take a look at it, take a look at Tony Hayes and it, and I'll admit here, Soup. Like a lot of times, I use the rear chase cam. That's kind of how my, I I kind of look at things. Uh, and and uh, so I'm sitting here watching Tony Hayes and watching him through the rear chase cam, watching everything behind him, and I see him up close to that wall. And I'm thinking, okay, he might skim the wall, and then that little piece right there juts out. <laughs> Day is done. <laughs> Hope he wasn't holding the soda. Is that beyond the windshield? Okay. Well, that's the end of heat number six. The scores continue to be tallied up. Right now, Errol Numb with 14, Bamber with 11, Burns with 7, and 7 and 7 for Cocky and Sauer. Vanderbilt in, sitting there in sixth position in the transfer spot tied with Yao Valverde. Edgar Sancinelli wearing the battle scars from the previous heat with pride being our pace car. And even if even if Johan Vanderbilt doesn't win, then he, if he has no more success the rest of the way, he was able to fend off Errol Numb into corner number one. All right, Edgar Sancinelli is our pace car as we are on an odd-numbered heat, so it's my turn to call the action. David, third degree burns is out there. Is he going to be on the pole position? I mean to confuse the director here. I believe it is going to be Burns on pole. Yal Valverde is going to be next to him. Now Burns sits with seven points. Valverde, how's he been doing so far? Valverde's got six, so these are important races for these guys. Next to those two, Pierce Cocky, who already has a win. He's got seven as well. Elmer Noteboom, not doing quite as well as he is... Sitting with, where are you, Elmer? Four. Alex Johnson and Vincent Bream make up the final row. Vincent Bream has himself five points. Johnson the same. Ooh, good three and a half up and over roll. Nice As the field comes to you. Get the hang on it. All right. Our attention goes to David Burns. Boy, he gets a good jump. Valverde being challenged by Pierce Cocky. Cocky has the inside in car number 23 as they head down into one. They're looking to go three wide behind him. Cocky takes it in. He should be safe. Looking on the outside in car number eight. That's note bomb. Diving on the inside is the car number 16 of Brame. They get that sorted out. And certainly Cocky does secure second place ahead of Valverde. Oh, the up boom's going around. No nope, boom. the front of Vincent Brim's machine. Yeah, Brim got in behind him, got into his right rear, and gave him a little bit of the pit maneuver there. All this going on behind David Burns, who's running away with it. Uh-oh, where are you going, Cocky? Cocky took an interesting racing line. That's going to cost him a position to Valverde. How did Cocky get down there? Was he encouraged to go down there? No, he just made a mistake. Oh, and losing a spot. Janssen loses a spot to Brame. All these very important as they try to get every point possible. Burns out in front. Valverde in second. Cocky in third. They seem pretty secure in those positions. And uh, keep in mind, we did check with Johan Vandebelt before the start of this race. If there are tiebreakers needed, they will go head-to-head -to, -head to settle that tiebreaker. So uh, right now, we do have a tie for that sixth position to transfer into the, the AMA. The final, excuse me. Through corner number one for the final time. Burns, Valverde, Cocky. Here comes Vincent Bram trying to pick up that position. Every point counts. Janssen and well off the pace, Elmer Nopon. Yeah, David Burns out there running like he's got naked clowns chasing him. Uh-oh. Going really wide as Cocky. He's going to lose a lot of momentum. Here comes car number 25. It's the uh, gardening car of Vincent Bram. Oh, they touch. Oh. Cocky spins off. Alex Johnson's going to be the big benefactor in that. He's going to get two spots off that contact. Johnson now moving up into third behind Valverde and Burns. Graham not giving up the ghost, but I think he doesn't have the pace to stay with Johnson. Graham looking to finish fourth. The leader is out of the final corner. It's going to be Burns. And then it's going to be Valverde. Uh, 
I'm going to give David Burns a 1 on that. I, ooh, who is that flying through the air? He gets a 10. It's Pierce Cocky. Oh, he's trying to get that distance record back. Can he get past the, the second marker cone? He does! <laughs> and still almost ends up on top of the tire. Are we, we going to go flying with Pierce Cocky here? We're going to go flying with Pierce Cocky soon. Here we go. Clear for takeoff. Minus three, two, one. Earth, sky, earth, sky, earth, sky. Oh my goodness. Looks like the movie Driven. <laughs> oh, we're going to go with that again. Yeah. <laughs> Finish the order. Sylvester Stallone yeah. movie ever. David Burns, Yal Valverde, Alex Janssen, Vincent Brahm, Pierce Cocky, and Elmer Notebaum. See, Edgar Cincinnati's his previous stint as pace car went well enough that he had to take a replacement car this time. He can't wear his scars from the previous time. Oh. So that says something. That, that's worth a, like a 7 or 8. So, so that was that was heat number yeah, 7. Yeah, so that we're on heat number 8 now. This would be the last heat. That's our last heat. Yeah, so all right. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Sue. No. You, who we okay, got? Okay. okay, so first, uh, the, the guys we're really going to want to be keeping our eyes on, of course. Uh, uh, we do have a chance to maybe see some leapfrogging, but the current ties that are out there are going to be 5th and 6th. That's going to be between Pierce Cocky and uh, looks like uh, Alex Johnson. So they're not in this one. They just got done racing. Ludwig Sauer and Vincent Brim, though, they're also tied for 7th and 8th. Ludwig Sauer, he's going to be wanting to break that tie. He's also racing in this one. Maybe he can get up there and get a few more uh, points and maybe jump up into that final feature. So he'll be one guy to keep an eye on. Starting on pole in this one's going to be Fabian Youngblue. Alongside him is going to be Dave Grohl, excuse me, Liam Quinn. And then Twan Tran and Ludwig Sauer out there in their Sesame Street machines. Johan Vandebelt in that Lego car. Johan's wanting some points as well after a good first heat. He's been kind of having a few trouble finding, trouble finding his way. And then Tony Hayes out there as well trying to get a few more points. That is going to be your six drivers here. As we come to green, Edgar Sancinelli on the gas. He ramps. What will he do? Oh, okay. Uh, at least he ended up on your lid. Good what try, a, Edgar. What a perfectly placed Dougie Beard camera. That was great. That was awesome. As they go to green, flying off the one. Johan Vandemel already making a move. He's off in the grass. He's fighting. Get Ludwig Sauer. Ludwig lets him back on. Fabian Youngblue's just looking in the rearview mirror saying, keep on racing, boys. I want those points. As he holds off the turn one with the lead, but Twan Tran and... Uh, uh, in that Ludwig Sauer making oh. contact. Teammates make contact. Oh, and Ludwig Sauer goes out of the ballpark. His car resets. That's going to move David Burns into third. Ran was able to continue. None of the drivers in this heat are inside the top six. But of course, they're one heat short, so that they're going to get their final chance for points. When I said when I said uh, David Burns, I meant Liam Quinn. I, I do kind of get them confused sometimes. I mean, they're both British, so they both sound alike to me. <laughs> they're going to love me for that one later. Johan Vandenbelt back there, though. He's giving Dave Grohl, excuse me, Liam Quinn a hard time. And looking at Tony Hayes, he's sliding through the grass. And Tuan Tran mired back now in fifth position after that contact with his teammate. <laughs> so go yeah. past Edgar Sancinelli still spinning his wheels out there in the dirt. Not a it, lot of Fabian Youngblue fans right now watching because if he can keep this. Oh, Johan Vandeveld! He's sending it! He's sending it! Could he go from third to first? No, Youngblue's going to be able to hold him oh. off, and he's making contact right now with Liam Quinn. They're fighting right off the track. That's how you race these little beetles. Young Luke right now in the lead. He can get into Whoa. the... Oh, no. Big roll in the tires. Quinn but only has... No, I mean, Johan Vandenbelt sent it once. Will he send it again? Yeah, that would be big for Johan Vandenbelt if he could pick up this race win, but... He is trying to do everything he can to get to Fabian Youngbluth. 
if he gets to him in a fun race, will he use the front bumper? I'm curious about that. We might see that. He's got a big run going into the last got quarter. Him. He's going to get him. Did he go in too hot, though? He's going to slide wide. <laughs> he get the wind of Fabian Youngblood. Oh, he's got Dana belts in the tire, and he is out of the ballpark. Great race for the second. Oh, and contact. Tran was able to bump Tony Hayes off the track to get second before he cartwheels down the track. <laughs> Boy, Vanderbilt gave gave it everything he had on that last corner. We're going to ride on board Johan Vanderbilt here. Let's see where we pick this one up at. Okay, so we're yeah. picking it down the, the, the short straightaway before the final straight. Heading to the final corner. Look, look at him switch. He's going to yeah. send it here. He knows what's going on, but he goes in too hot. Slides yeah. it off the track. No hope of keeping that car. <laughs> get it down. So, you know he had a smile on his face the entire time he was doing it, too. Here's the way that finishes up. And this is big for Fabian Youngblues. I think this win is going to get him into the into the main event. Uh, he gets it the does. win. It does by one point over Piers Cocky. He's going to get six by one point. We're bringing up those points in a minute. The official finishing order was uh, Young Bluth, and then oh, the the points are gonna we're gonna look at them as they scroll across right now. You can see who's there. Numb, of course, Burns, Bamber, Valverde, Young Bluth with nine, and then in sixth position, that's Pierce Cocky with eight points, and then you see. Uh-oh, Alex Johnson with eight as well. That's a tie for six. Now, there is, before they do the shootout, there is a tiebreaker, and they go to see who has the most wins, that type of thing. We'll wait for the official announcement on that. Oh, okay, so they're, 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 and, uh, they're calculating right now the head-to-head. The -head. I think it's head-to-head -head wins ah. between, the, between the drivers involved. Is now everybody's just out there having fun. But it's not over if you if you're an Edgar Sancinelli fan who has zero points, which means he finished last in each of his three heats. Don't worry, because he gets to come out there and be in this quarterfinal. Okay, so while while they're uh, figuring out here uh, how the tiebreaker is going to work for that sixth position, and everything else, um, and figuring out also if they're going to need to do a runoff essentially for it, uh, I'm wondering, uh, Omjet, if, if, can we get the uh, the breakdown about how the heats and the the, the quarterfinals and everything, since we're it's been a while since we showed it, yeah. and show it how the quarterfinal, semifinal, and final are going to work out here. Of course, the quarterfinal, once again, so these are going to be the P11 through P16 out of the points that they accumulated through their heats. It's going to be a three-lap race compared to the two-lap heats that we've been doing. Now, the competition up front is going to be intense because in this one, if you don't finish in that top two, you're done. Your day is done. You're watching from the sidelines. You can come have fun watching this with us because it's been a blast so far. Okay, so the top two that advance are going to go into the semifinals. P7 through P10 in those point standings are automatically in those semifinals. And then once again, out of that, the top two are going to advance out of that three-lap race. So competition will be tight up front as well. And then for the final, the three-lap final, it'll be the P1 through P6 in those point standings. That's why that P6 is so important. And uh, that, will, of course, will also include the two cars that transferred from the semifinal. So a total of eight cars will be in the final three-lap race. But getting set up for the quarterfinals, watching Edgar St. Chanel have a little fun, a little bit of uh, murdering some cones out there. Now, Adam, we were talking about calculating who's going to make it in the top six, who's going to get into that main event right away. But really, there's a calculation right now for who is in spots 11 and 12, as there are a tie for ninth position, Quan Tran, Tony Hayes, Ludwig Sauer, and Vincent Bream. Well, they all have seven points. Two of those guys are going to be racing right now. They're going to be, they're going to, the tie is going to be broken, and they're going to be 11th and 12th. Two of those guys are going to be called 7th and 8th. I guess I did that wrong, didn't I? Ninth, and 9th and 10th. 9th and 10th. So they're breaking yeah. that tie right now to see. Well, they, they, they're, 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 it looks like they're, they're trying to do everything at the same time. It's, it's kind of what I'm seeing here, too. Yeah. So, 
Um, they're just trying to get it straightened out. I mean, that, that's what happens when you got a, a four-way tie for ninth, and that obviously will impact things in this next race. And of course, the, the three-lap tie for six or three-play, the three-man tie for six. So, uh, quite a bit to figure out. I mean, let me I, let me. I, I, let I think me, it'd be easier just throw them all in the track and yeah, let them go. Let me give a suggestion for next time. Forget the tiebreaker. Just as far as entertainment goes, just bring them on out there and let them race. I'd love to see a, a and, and one lap that, shootout. That might be what's happening here between Pierce Cocky and Johan Vandebelt. They're they're out there right now. I think that, uh, that so they were the two that are still left standing uh, after the tiebreaker. So that dropped Alex Janssen out of it, out oh, of I, the tiebreaker. I think so there's more. Do the runoff here. I think it's Cocky and Vandebelt, but also out there, I see Hayes and and. Uh, Hayes and Tran, they may be doing, are they doing simultaneous tiebreakers perhaps? No, I think, they, I think uh, Tran and them are, might be, I wouldn't see. Well, Hayes and Tran are that. tried with seven points. Okay, so they might be doing a simultaneous run here. Okay. I think that's what we got. Yeah. So this will be between uh, Tuan Tran and Tony Hayes. Apologies to Edgar Sanchinelli. Probably won't watch him too much here this time as he just stuffs it in the tires anyway. So Johan Vandebelt and Piers Cocky, these two already had a little bit of a run in earlier. We'll watch these guys. I believe this will be a one lap shootout for these guys. And we'll watch these guys and then we'll go back to watch the uh, Twad Tran and Tony Hayes fight. Piers Cocky getting a big, nice enough jump on him on Johan Vandebelt. Johan Vandebelt tries to go up and under. He can't quite get there. You cover the front two, I'll cover the back two. Tran right now ahead of Tony Hayes as they work through one. Here's Cocky still back there. He, he cannot separate himself out from Johan Vandebelt. They both run wide. They're both running nearly identical lines. Johan Vandebelt sent it once today. Is he going to try to send it? Actually, he sent it twice today. He might have to try to send it a third time in order to get ahead of this thing. Here's Cocky, though, being able to fend him off here so far. Johan Vandebelt not quite able to get to the rear bump. Pierce Cocky runs a little bit wide. Johan Vandebelt cannot fit his nose in the gap. Going through the S's here before they take that final short straightaway leading to turn 11. Johan Vandebelt falling off Pierce Cocky a little bit. It's going to come down to that last corner. Who's going to have the momentum? Johan Vandebelt tries to get the line to go in there. Pierce Cocky ends up with the better line off. Johan Vandebelt cannot get the moment of coming off the corner. Pierce Cocky's going to win the tiebreaker. I think Cocky will advance to the main event, and then Tran is comfortably going to come home ahead in his ahead of Tony Hayes. So I believe Tran, we will not be seeing him in the quarterfinal. I would guess that Tony Hayes will be racing here in just a minute. So that was fun. Yeah, that was an efficient way of doing that. There you go. That's... Killing two birds with one stone. If you had an inclination to do such a horrible thing. Okay, now we go to the, uh, what I believe is the quarterfinals. Yeah. So once again, these quarterfinals are having the cars eleven uh, P11 through P16. So, and the top two will advance. Not sure what there must be. Maybe a little. We have a little warm up going on right now. They're letting the guys come out and have a little fun. So yeah, I, I also want to point out that something that I just saw. Of course, uh, the Absolute Beginners League. They're organizing and everything else, helping us out with a, a nice little spreadsheet on uh, to uh, oh. to kind of keep track of everything. And, and really much appreciated. I mean, this is amazing how, how well they do the behind the scenes part here, um, and how fast they update it too. But I also want to point out that um, uh, we, we've always been calling them the pace car, the live pace car and everything else. But they've given them a different name, Soup. They're calling them the official unsafety car. The unsafety the car. The unsafety car. I love the absolute beginner guys. They are fun. Do you know what I really, let's talk a little bit about just why they are so fun. Because they not only take into into consideration what's fun for their drivers and what makes for a good a good series. In the back of their mind, I think they're always keeping, does this make for a good broadcast? And that's really important for us here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We like to bring you not only good racing, but entertaining racing as well. 
yeah, it, it definitely helps out. And of course, uh, we partnered with ABL for a, for a long time. And um, I mean, I think Soup we've done now what uh, maybe six seasons. Yeah, these guys. Yeah. I mean, maybe even I don't, I don't know. I've lost track of how many we've done. Well, just um, to, just to follow up on, they run they run a short seven or eight race season. Right, right. No, it's not like six or eight no, years. <laughs> right. No, no drop races, so the commentators don't have to worry about that, and they. Honestly, a series starts, it has a middle, it has an end, and then we wipe it clean and we go again. You know, we do some of these ones that go on for, well, well considerably more, and it, it tends to uh, get a little stale at the end. Never a stale race in the Absolute Beginner League. Always fresh. Don't be fooled also, Adam, by their, by their name. Oh, no, no. You, you get all mixes of experience. And usually, you know, the, the mixes actually works out pretty well. Um... The uh, one thing, though, that, that, that the, the beginning of the seasons, though, when everybody's there, everybody's all gung ho and everything else, <laughs> having the the fifty plus <laughs> car fields are just insane. I love it to, to the point that it's insane. Yeah, our, our, it's a it's tough on the on the commentators, it's tough on the directors, and it's tough on the director's uh, machine as well. Okay. Well, I guess it's my turn now as we're on. This is number nine. It's an odd race. I guess this one is me. So here's what I think's going on. We have drivers 11 through 16. Whoops. That's on the unsafety car. <laughs> oh, Bastion House certainly qualifies to be a geez, his event. All right. He gets the 125 going again. Uh, no, that's that's Burns. That's Burns in this unsafety car third degree actually spun it there. Now we get him lined up. So here's who I think we got. Sauer looks like he's in this one. Looks like then we have Liam Quinn as well. They're trying to get him organized. Here comes the yellow card. Tony Hayes. Looks like Tony Hayes is going to move up. Let's wait him just a second. Let him get them started out before I go through this one more time. Okay. Sauer and Hayes make up your front row. Quinn and Notebomb make up your second row. Hausman and Sanchinelli, Edgar still scoreless, make up your third row. But it doesn't matter how many points you got right now. You just want to finish one or two. David Burns <laughs> spins the pace car again. He just Jeez. hit the handbrake and it just went right around. We don't need him. He's right <laughs> they're all waiting for him again. Like, the, jeez. They're going to go without him. Trying to give the naked clown more screen time. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, that would be illegal what David Burns just did in the race. I guarantee you that's a cut course penalty. <laughs> all right. He's, Burns has found his way back out there again where he belongs. Let's see what he's setting up for here for his yeah. grand finale. Three laps, not two. We go three now. Takes it in pit lane, does a little... Oh, oh that was, well, that was more painful than exciting. I, I think I think he was. He tried really hard on that one. We'll give him a, we'll give him a point for trying. Sawyer gets the jump, blinking. Oh, no, no, that's Hayes that gets the jump, blinking as Sawyer. The 24 car tries to bump the eight off. Note Bomb gets a little bit of a shove. Quinn down the middle. Note Bomb trying to dive in on the outside. The inside is held by Sawyer. Sawyer defends off second position. That leaves the inside open for Bastian Hausman. Hausman gets together with Quinn. This is a battle for third. Hausman in the dark car. Quinn in the 24. Now they go to the wagon wheel. Hausman takes it wide. He's gonna lose all sorts of position. Quinn gets third, but up in front, it's Sauer and Hayes. Oh, a big oh, that was a sour sour. contact. That was a big punch. Hayes drops all the way back to fifth position, just ahead of Sanchinelli. So that's going to put Liam Quinn in that transfer spot. Love with Sauer, though. I mean, he's, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want just that transfer spot. He wants to try to go for the win, but Elmer Nopeloom and Bastian Hausman are back there, and uh, I don't think that they're not going to try to get up there and mix it up, too. You would think if they name a series after you, you'd get a little more respect on the track. Not the case. Sauer and uh, 
I have to peel through here. It's, it's uh, Sour and Quinn. Remember, these are the, are the heats for two laps. Now these sem these uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals will all be three laps, so we got two to go. Pass for P3 as, as Hausman gets around Oakball. Pull back the curtain a little bit on, on commentating. Advice to all you uh, up-and-coming commentators, don't try to scroll through the cars when there's 20 that is parked on pit lane. It takes you right into the pit lane <laughs> cars here. So right I've now it's I've Sour and Quinn. I've only five or six times. <laughs> I'm going to stop doing it down the front straight. But now, back here, I don't have to worry about it. Sour, Quinn, Hausman, Notebomb. One, two, three, four. Sanchinelli has got around Hayes. But really, those positions don't matter. It's all about one, two, and, and three. And right now, one and two is Sauer and Quinn. Bastian Hausman has a long way to go if he's going to advance into the semifinal. They come around, they're going to get the white flag lap. Remember, we go one extra lap here. It looks Ooh. like everybody remembers that. Nobody's diving off to the ramp. And they all look comfortable in their position. Sauer and Quinn are good. Boy, Hausman has really got to push the issue. He's back by about ooh, 10 car lengths. See, I think Ludwig Sauer and uh, uh, Liam Quinn right now, their biggest thing is they just don't want to overdrive any corners. They don't want to take any chances. They don't need to. As long oh. as they, oh, now they really don't want to take any chances. Now it's oh. Hausman on the lid. Talk about overdriving. Wagon Wheel got him. He's oh, and Tony Hayes nails him. Hausman's flying through the air. We'll come back and take a look at that one. That's good news for Liam Quinn, Mr. Excitement, and that's good news for Flip, your Ludwig Sauer. They come down out of uh, corner number nine. They just have Paddock Ben. That's corner ten. One more corner to go. I'd be surprised if Sauer even puts it out on the dirt this time. Yep, he takes a more conventional line. Let's advance those two drivers into the semifinals. All Come right. Back, take a look at what happened to Bastion Hausman. And just out of wagon bend, he just kind of pushed wide, trying to get every little bit that he can. And he'll and that, great tires. Then you'll want to stay on it. When I say grazed, I mean, he walloped the tires. Hits the Armco. He's going to go over a couple of times. And these cars are resilient. He probably still could have drove it until Tony Hayes came along and finished him off. <laughs> Maybe Tony Hayes tried to avoid the contact. Maybe Tony Hayes getting out a little bit of the frustration of getting punted out of the lead. You be the judge. Certainly, Bastion Hausman had it coming to him. <laughs> oh, Bastion, we really do like you, man. <laughs> yeah, we've very much. given you a hard time. Edgar Zancinelli is going to be the uh, unsafety car here this time around. I'm going to use that from now on. Johan Vandeveld, he's going to be leading him down uh, seventh overall after the tiebreaker. Alongside him will be Alex Janssen. And we've got uh, Tuan Tran, Vincent Brim, Ludwig Sauer, and Liam Quinn with Quinn and Sauer transferring out of that uh, quarterfinal that you just saw. So they're going to have to go to the back to the front. They want to keep on going to the final. That's not that far. Right now, Vanderbilt and Janssen, they don't need to make a pass. They just need to hold station. Tuan Tran, boy, he would be hungry for some success. And Adam, these drivers, <laughs> they take a lot of pride in this. If they can't win a championship, we've heard them. We've heard him come into interviews and, and, and tout, yeah, I haven't won a championship, but I am the race of champion winner. Well, that's a badge of honor. I mean, it is. You, you survived the shenanigans that happened here. You deserve it. Shenanigans. I love that word, shenanigans. So we got the Lego car out there. We got the IKEA car on the front row. We got the unsafety car with a good ramp. Great view from the Batman camera, except he goes out of the park. Judges can't score you if you go out of the park, Edgar. As we're coming down to green for the semifinal. 
Alex Janssen and Johan Vandevelt waiting to glam on the throttle. They're away now. They wait until the last second. They kept that field nice and close this time around. Johan Vandevelt, though, getting that jump to the lead. Will he be able to hold it? He's got a bunch of a thunder and herd behind him. He's going to go a little bit wide, but he's going to dime in the corner off quite well. That actually means Alex Johnson has to lift off the gas just a touch. And then back behind him, Vincent Brim and Tuan Tran actually locking bumpers for just a second. And he slows up. I thought the teammates were going to have to split him there for a second, but Tuan Tran's going to get the worst end of the deal. Is he going to be able to keep it out of the tires? He does. Vincent Brim's going to go to third with All right. uh, Liam Quinn right behind him. That's right. what Sauer and Quinn right behind him, rather. That's what Vincent needed to do, and now he's right on the bumper of Janssen. That's the transfer position. Vanderbilt looks safe where he is, but Brame is doing all he can in that gardening machine to get up on the back of the Akia and see if he can make that pass. He's going to need to. He's the, this, this race will go fast. He's going to run out of time before he knows it. As they're coming down already to go through the final corner to complete lap one here in just a moment. Looking back, Johan Vandeveld really wide through there, but so is Vincent Brim. It's about as wide as I've seen anybody go through there here so far today, Sue, but not actually lose time. Brim's got some momentum. Watch him take it deep into one. Boy, talk about Oh, Sauer's going to oh. take that momentum and say no. <laughs> My God, Brim was taking it in so deep. I didn't think he'd get it locked up. Sauer took it in deep. He got a little breaking help in the form of Vincent Brim. Oh, but he runs wide, almost makes contact with the tires. Here comes Liam Quinn. Quinn he is going to return with Dave Grohl. I told you Dave Grohl doesn't like being passed. Tuan Tran hip checks his teammate, gets around Sawyer. Sawyer off. Brem gets that position. All of this, though, not important, as right now it's the fan belt. Johan Vandenbelt and Alex Janssen in the transfer spot. Uh, Liam Quinn right now has to drive an extremely last lap in a third uh, because those guys are starting to pull away just a little bit. Yeah, Alex Janssen's kind of feeling safe right now. You don't want him feeling safe if you're Liam Quinn. As Liam Quinn runs real wide. Lee, uh, oh, excuse me. Liam Quinn doesn't run real wide. Alex Janssen runs wide. Liam Quinn takes a little more of a conservative line there through 11. You know, I, I think right now, as long as... As long as Johan Vandebelt cannot touch anything, he's going to come away with the win. And as long as Alex Janssen drives clean, I don't think uh, Liam Quinn's going to have enough time to get up there and catch him. I don't think that's going to stop Liam Quinn from trying here. You definitely see he's trying to push that car. Uh, but I think it's all for yeah. naught. Yeah, and, uh, and, whoa, Ludwig Sauer almost really sends that in there. That would have really been all for naught for Liam Quinn. I love the shows. I love the sponsors on the front two cars. I, I think Lego started over there in, in uh, Scandinavia somewhere. Yes, or yeah, actually, yeah, I believe so, yeah. And an Ikea also from there. If you've never played hide-and-seek in an Ikea store, oh, man, <laughs> you're missing a lot of fun. Well, I believe this is – are they getting the checker flag here? I've lost Good. track. I believe so this, this is, is it. Flag. Yeah. This is going to go to Johan Vandevelt. Johan's going to come away with uh, – Finally picking up a stage win here as he's going to come away with a semi-final win. He's going to get the pleasure of starting P7 for the final race. And Alex Johnson's going to join him to start P8. The rest of the guys, you're going home. <laughs> Johan Vandevelt goes flying through the air after contact with Liam Quinn. <laughs> I think uh, Dave Grohl was mad at uh, Johan Vandevelt. Decided to headbutt him. There we go. Jeez. <laughs> Clearly, these I ratings, the the safety rating, not in effect today. Even if it were, do you think it'd stop him? Yeah, that's probably not. <laughs> well, it's been a long time since we've seen this guy, but if you all remember Errol Numb, he, he he's back out there. Numb, he's back out there. Numb. <laughs> out there now as we head to the main event who gets the honor of being the unsafety car well it's the 57 of Edgar Sanchinelli he'll get one more chance to show off his gymnastic skills in that machine all right three laps 
eight cars this time. Let me set the stage for you. In this familiar number 78, no matter what car he races in, somehow he manages to get a Bush Fink paint scheme. That is Errol Numb. Looking to go wire to wire. David, third degree burns, has the pace dude in the 125 out there in the naked clown machine. In the red 45, it's Bambi, Neil Bamber, sporting the Coca-Cola colors. Not quite sure, is that a, what, what, uh, Piao Valverde is driving. It's kind of a polka dotted car. He's going to be in fourth. Fabian Youngbluth is out there in the yellow and blue machine and that aqua-colored car of Pierce Short Phil Cocky. <laughs> right on his hood, it says Phil. F-I-L-L. -L. Is that a reminder? That was, I guess, there's no pit stop I, today, so nothing. I, I don't know where you fill, even fill up these cars at. <laughs> then the IKEA machine of Alex Janssen is back there. And the Lego car of Johan Vanderbilt. Boy, that Lego car is really good looking. Okay. Three laps to go. It has been entertaining. Edgar Sancinelli is going to get one more attempt. Let's see if he can score a 10. Graceful. Uh, it didn't yeah, get it could have been better. Didn't get the height. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're going green soup. Gather up the chicken steak, cover behind the cows, because the horses are out of the barn. He's been saving it to this event. Errol Numb leads the stampede of seven other cars into the first corner. Diving down the Coca-Cola machine, a Bamber tries to get in there, gets in behind Burns, he's gonna lose the spot, he falls off the track, Valverde moves up into third, Youngbluth, Cocky, Vandebel. Who, who is that way wide out there? Oh, that was Neil Bamber. Bamber in the Coke machine. Into the wall, it's Cocky! Getting turned back onto oh. the track by Vandebel. We're gonna get a quick replay of the driver. He was really run. Bamber was on the move. Put it in the wall, and the fan belt straightened him back out. Meanwhile, up front, you're not missing anything. It's Errol Nunn being challenged by Burns. There you see it. Come back live. Down into Paddock Bend. Numb with about a six car length lead on David Third Degree Burns. Those guys are comfortably ahead. Of Belverde, Youngbluth, Vanderbilt. There so is a different <laughs> lines going through eleven. There. Look at Vanderbilt. He has a move. He moves to the outside. He's trying to keep Youngbluth pinned to the inside. He doesn't get a woed up. That's one way to slow down. Put it into the back of Youngbluth. To <laughs> Jal Valverde, he got himself into trouble there. Actually, no, he got a little help from Johan Vanderbilt. That was Young Blue who got by. Sorry, I apologize. Misidentified that one. Getting punted off the track was a Vanderbilt, yes. So Vanderbilt now farther down the order. There is a battle for the lead, though. Numb has not been able to drop Burns. And as you see, and I mean, Euro Numb, David Burns is close enough to Euro Numb that uh, just just one slight misstep on Euronum, and I thought it almost had it right there. It looked like the rear tires caught the grass when he wasn't planning on it. Um, one little misstep, and David Burns is going to be right there. The, the closing rate in these cars when there's a mistake is just incredible. There's a mass of fed cars there. I think one of those is Pierce Cocky. Let's go back and look back at Johnson. There is a battle back here for the Akia car. Is on the inside of Young Bluth. I believe the 16 should be able to get this pass made under normal circumstances. It would be an easy pass, and he does. Meanwhile, up front, Numb starting to pull away now about eight car lengths. They run it wide. Of course, there is the the handbrake, but perhaps in David Car and David Burns' car, there might be what they call the numb break as well, as you can use the guy in front of you to help slow your car down. I think it would depend on how much, how, what kind of lengths he wants to go to to yeah. win this thing. I wouldn't. Oh, uh, I don't think he'd do it, though. Oh, 
But it would be fun to see. But yeah, I don't think I think that that arrow is too far ahead. They yeah. come down into the final corner now. Paddock Bend. They'll go around one more time. I believe. Oh, we think maybe this is it. Yeah, I think it's well, it, no. Sue. Well, have I lost track? And is it over? Did I miss it? I think there's it is. Three, boys. It It's over. It's over. Oh, that was an undramatic call. <laughs> well, hit the rewind right now, and this is how it would have been. Your champion, season 14 of the Absolute Beginners Race of Champion is Arrow Numb. We're look at this battle for fourth place. I just didn't get enough of that one. I just, I just wanted more. Well, it is appropriate if, when it's all said and done, Adam. When it uh, when it comes to a race of champions, if there's any justice in the world, it, it really needs to go to the man who has all the championships, Errol Numb. Just yeah. another feather in his cap. It really is. Yeah, you know, just talk about a guy who just knows how to win in anything he drives. It's Errol Numb. All right. Well, the racing is over here. We've gone through eight heats and, and uh, a quarterfinal, a semifinal, and then the main event. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be back to talk to some of the drivers before we put a lock on the gate, not only here at Summit Point, but on the season. Back in a few. Sanctioned by the Absolute Beginner League, welcome back to GSRC's coverage of the uh, Season 14 Race of Champions from Summit Point Raceway. It was a lot of fun, and we can't really give you a graphic, but we can we can go ahead and run down the, the finishing order just verbally here. Uh, if my time, if my scoring is right, I, well, I guess we can't actually because we don't have a final total, but we can give you the overall champion was Errol Numb. As he came home, the winner just ahead of David Third Degree Burns in that final event. Congratulations to Errol Num, just another championship for him. Let's go ahead and put, see if we have interviews here, and we do have Errol Num, so I'll go ahead and bring him down and talk to him. 
Arrow, do you have a copy? Yeah, I do. Hey, congratulations on the championship. <laughs> That's a nice way to finish off the season. Did you have fun? Uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, in the beginning, maybe some difficulties, but uh, it was yeah, pretty easy at the end. Wire to wire at the end. I think maybe your best performance was the, I think it was the second heat race where you had to start in sixth, and it took you about half a lap to get to the lead. Yeah, it was just, uh, I actually missed the start. I was so far behind, by, but it was good for me because yeah, there were some games going on and uh, I just had easy passes. Have you, I know that you, you race in a lot of cars. Have you ever raced in an official iRacing uh, rallycross event? Is, have you been in these cars ever before this event? No, I haven't. Uh, only maybe a few hours when they came out in the first day. Well, no matter what we put you in, is what is the, I'm going to get you out of here on this question. What is the car that you dislike the most? I ask you always about your favorite car. What car have you ever been in says, I'm never racing this car again? Mm, hard to tell. Maybe <laughs> uh, the, the Formula Renault 2.0, I'm not racing again. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Congratulations. Look, we, we don't know where we're going to see it, but we're sure we're going to see you on something on GSRC down the road, okay? Yeah, I'm actually in the Big Racer race now, so. Well, it's good good, good luck with that, and we'll see you as, as the, uh, down the road, wherever you show up. Errol Num, our Season 14 champion, also the Race of Champion winner as well. Adam? Yeah, so uh, David Burns was able to bring that thing uh, home in the second four today with the a uh, pretty good view of Euro Num's rear bumper there, David Burns, for almost the entirety of that uh, that heat there. But overall, pretty good day. Man, we love these race of champions. Are these, are these just as much fun to drive as they are to call? Oh, yeah, completely. They're just absolutely nuts, even beforehand and during the races. And you, can, can I just say, having the rear view of Euro's bumper is the story of every season I've ever been in, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mind it. He's, pretty... he's something to aim for. I'll, I'll tell you that. He's something. Uh, to aim for. Well, we, we we just we just try to figure out if there's something that he can't drive, so we can try to stick him in it and prove us all wrong. Well, I I wanted to make him do this car in reverse, but nobody would agree for that. But he'd probably <laughs> still win. But there you go. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question that uh, that Soup just asked uh, Euro a question. Did you ever have you ever raced this VW Beetle before today? Uh, yeah, I've done a bit of the rally cross, and I have done a couple of test races on, on the road, and it, it's just nuts, but I, it kind of suits me. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, good deal. Well, hey, uh, David, are you gonna be, you're going to be back for next year for the or next season for the Formula Renault cars, right? Oh, of course, totally. Yeah, love it. Okay, well, we wouldn't expect anything less. Well, hey, congrats on second here for today, and uh, we'll talk to you again maybe in a couple weeks. Yeah, cheers, guys. See you next season. Always a good interviewer, Dave Burns. Okay, let's go ahead. We're going to be able to talk now to series organizer and participant here today and fellow. He's going to be joining me in the broadcast booth for the MX5 World Tour coming up here at the end of this month. It's the fan build, Johan Vanderbilt. Congratulations on your race and a good uh, good show. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you lost it, man. This was It was hectic, but it was immense fun. You know, every time you do one of these, every time the absolute beginner guys do one, what – Whatever combination you have, we say, oh, let's do that one again next year. And then you change it up, and ah, it's disappointing. And then it's always better. And it's like, oh, let's do that again next year. I got to say the same thing. I'm going to talk for Adam. Let's do this again next year. Man, this was great. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you liked it. I mean, from us on track, it, it was amazing as well. The, the the fact that we had different cars on, on this track, just it was absolute mayhem being able to go off the track. But you can take more momentum, but you, of course, have less traction. Uh, we also have more cars on track in different heats and in the final. So everything was more hectic. Everything had more action. So <laughs> I'm glad that it worked out and it, uh, it was more exciting to watch. Well, I'll tell you what Adam and I were both saying. I think one of the things that made it successful was the choice of track. You could not have chose a better track than Summer Point. It played out perfectly for what these cars can do. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it, it has a long straight. It has a tight uh, and, and twisty section. You have several corners where you can abuse the, the right. off track. Uh, so it, it was just a perfect car for exactly what we, uh, or perfect track for what we wanted to, uh, to accomplish here. 
Okay, well, I'm gonna not even go to your performance here today. Although it was exciting, <laughs> it was it was it was really fun to watch everybody race. Uh, when you watch the replay, Bastian Hausman, he, he was the star yeah, of the show. My, uh... He's my uh, yeah my target for next season. I've got some <laughs> playback. <laughs> yeah, um, I want to talk about. Let's talk about next season. Are the plans underway? Are we looking for something similar for uh, what would it be season fifteen? I guess. Yeah, exactly. Season fifteen already, man. Um, yeah, we we have plans underway. Uh, we will be releasing information about next season soon. We will keep the Formula Renault in the Formula Nigel, which we hope to broadcast once again on GSRC. And for the Tony Hayes Cup, we're planning on doing a little bit different. Uh, this season, we ran the Porsches, and we are thinking about choosing some different cars for next season, but we're still working on that, how it exactly is going to work. Well, it's always great. Whatever you do, you always put on a good show. We, we enjoy it. It's one of our favorite series here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. Congratulations on a great show today. Thanks, guys. And once again, thanks for broadcasting the whole season. You guys are great. And uh, can't wait to bring it back next one. All right. Johan Vandeveld, the fan belt. He's been around from the very beginning. That's going to do it here for us on the Global Sim Racing Channel, at least for now. Uh, if you enjoyed watching Liam Quinn, he might be back. I haven't checked the standings. We might be seeing him as the majors are coming up. I know my partner. Adam, oh, Adam, did we did we? Uh, oh, I'm here. Make the, or did we make the top split? Or oh well, no. A... Okay, so so for the majors, for those people that are watching it tonight, uh, it, there's just going to be one split, but we we widen the the pro split just a little bit to get everybody in. Right. So I saw I saw that. So it's 56. A few more extra heats. That's going to be coming up later on tonight. You do not want to miss that. What what are we actually racing? What is that combination? The, the four the 410 sprint at oh. Maxville. Oh, that's going to be good. You will not want to miss that. GSRC will be there. We hope you join us. Let's go ahead and thank the people that made this possible. How about everybody at the Absolute Beginner League for organizing Formula Legal and contracting with GSRC to broadcast it. Thanks to the company's equipment software that you see on the screen right now that we use on the broadcast. The original music that gives every GSRC broadcast a unique flavor and feel. That's courtesy of Eric Eckholm and June Lalonde. See the screen to how to contact each of them. Sliding across your screen now are just some of the upcoming broadcasts, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. If you'd like to find out more information about GSRC, including a complete list of future broadcasts, which will keep you updated on the Absolute Beginner League's return for Season 15, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. We're also on Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. And while you're here, if you haven't done so already, subscribe by simply hitting the button on this YouTube channel. Finally, on behalf of the crew, Adam, Sean, well, it's not Sean, it's Adam, Omjed, and Dougie. There we go. I just read what it has down there. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Well, thanks, Sean, too. If that, with that said, we're off to have fun Storm of the Castle. My gosh, I almost got through the end of this read without making a mistake. But it wouldn't be the season unless Soup makes a mistake. Take a drink! And until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.